In this video, we will be looking at the selection sort algorithm and how it works. Our focus will be on understanding how exactly the algorithm successively finds the next smallest element and pushes it towards the front of the sorted list. Now, selection sort is an in-place sorting algorithm which builds up a sorted sublist in the same item list by picking up the smallest element from among the unsorted items in the list and placing it at the end of the sorted sublist. At the beginning, the sorted sublist is empty. And as we progressively keep on sorting the elements by picking the next smaller one to be put at the end of the sorted sublist, we successively keep on building up the sorted part of the list. So now let us take up five numbers and then sort them as per selection sort. So this is our input list of numbers, which consists of, as I said, five numbers, which are 10, 5, 100, 1, and 10. The point to note regarding iteration 1 is that in iteration 1, we don't have any numbers in the sorted sublist or more simply put, we haven't yet started sorting the numbers and we don't assume that any particular number is in already a sorted position. Something we do in insertion sort. The first element on the left is assumed to be the sorted sublist. But in this case, we don't do that. So what we do is, we start off with the empty sorted sublist and that's why it's not mentioned on the video also here. And then we find the smallest element. So from among the five numbers which we need to sort, we find out the smallest number. That smallest number, in this case as you can see this is one. Needs to go and sit at the front of the unsorted elements or at the tail of the sorted list or rather the sub list. So currently as we know there is no sorted elements all are considered as unsorted. So one will be our first sorted element and it will be placed at the head of the unsorted list which is at the place of 10. So we will move 10 in 1's place and 1 in 10's place. This is how selection short works. We simply swap the smallest number in the unsorted list with the head position of the unsorted list which will then become the tail position of the sorted list. Let me explain. So we pick up 1 and we swap 10 and 1. So 10 goes in 1's position and 1 goes in 10's position at the head of the list. Now when we move to iteration 2 and we have the numbers. So 1 is now part of a sorted sublist. We no longer need to sort the sorted sublist again. So in this iteration 5 is the smallest number and it is at the correct position because the head of the unsorted elements is currently located at the index second index position which is 5 and 5 is at the correct place so i marked it with a tick mark and we have the second element of the sorted sublist in place so when we move to iteration 3 Our sorted sublist will now have two elements, 1 and 5. Note that at the end of iteration 2, we have two elements in sorted sublist. So at the end of nth iteration, we will have n numbers in the sorted sublist in general. So from among the three numbers which were yet to be sorted, 10 was the smallest and it was moved to the head of the unsorted 
sub list which was position held by 100 so 110 were swapped so now at the end of third iteration or at the beginning of the fourth iteration three of the numbers 1 5 and 10 are in the correct position as per increasing order now we have two elements in our unsorted elements list towards the right that is 100 and 10,000. Now we need to find again the smallest element of the unsorted numbers which is 100 and 100 is at the head of the unsorted sublist or next to the sorted sublist that is the tail of the sorted sublist. So 100 is in the correct position and that is why 100 remains. Now notice one thing 10,000 is the only remaining element after iteration 4. So if the first 4 elements 1, 5, 10 and 100 are in the correct position then the 5th element has to be in the correct position because it is the only one remaining. And that indeed is true because 10,000 is the largest number. So in general n iterations will lead to n numbers in the sorted position. So if you have n numbers as such, so you have input list of n numbers, so you will need n minus 1 iterations to find out their correct position. So this is our final sorted list and this is how selection sort works. So now we will take a look at the Java code for implementing selection sort algorithm. So we start off our implementation for the selection sort algorithm by defining a class named selection sort. We then define our input list of numbers as an array of primitive int. And it's a static array which contains 10, 5, 100, 1, and 10,000. Next, we define our static method of do sort which accesses this input array named int array and sorts. So, first, we define our iteration handling loop. So, outer is the counter for iterations. Next, as you can see, an int variable called min position is initialized to outer, which will always take the value of the current iteration number starting from 0. I will explain its actual usage in a little while. But for now, we have another loop with the counter inner, which starts from outer position and goes on till the end of the array. So this inner is nothing but the loop for finding the minimum of the unsorted elements and the min position is nothing but the holder of the index for the minimum number. Next we what we need to do is we need to swap number in the unsorted list with the number at the head of the unsorted list. So in this case we will actually be swapping the minimum number of the unsorted list with the number at the index position equal to the outer loop which is nothing but the iteration number. Since the loop counters start from 0 so do the iteration numbers in our Java program and hence the fourth iteration will have the value of outer as 3 and the fourth position or the fourth index in our list the total list in which we are sorting in place will have the index number as 3. So basically our number at the head of the unsorted list will have an index equal to the outer loops counters value. 
and that is what we are swapping with so we swap the element at the position or rather index value equal to outer counters value with the minimum number found in the unsorted list which is nothing but the value stored in min position index so what we do is we swap the element at the index outer in the array int array with the element at the index min position so we keep on doing this as we keep on doing this our outer value keeps on increasing that is our iteration number keeps on increasing and so do the number of sorted numbers or the sorted sub list keeps on increasing and our unsorted sub list keeps on decreasing because it runs from or rather is exists from the value of index equal to outer to the uh, length of the array which is nothing but the values iterated upon by the counter so our sorted sublist keeps on increasing and the unsorted sublist keeps on decreasing as our outer iteration number keeps on increasing and our inner counter initialization number or position keeps on moving towards the right and we slowly sort all the elements except the last one because that is automatically found in the correct position as we saw in the whiteboard video so in this way we keep on selecting the minimum element from the unsorted portion which is the whole list at the beginning and keep on putting it at the head of the list or rather the head of the unsorted list which is the tail of the sorted list and in this way the sorted list keeps on expanding until it reaches the second last position of the input numbers list or array in this case so this is how selection sort works i hope you like the video and the explanation please do leave your feedback in the comments or if you have any queries you can ask them as well in the comments and please like and share this video and do subscribe to java brahman channel as i plan to cover a vast array of areas among in algorithms and data structures in the coming weeks and months thank you